Hi guys and welcome to a new video on Sonal's Life. Now obviously the last review that I had, which was about a week ago maybe, there was it was a very controversial video. Well, okay, the video wasn't controversial, the show was controversial as we had the New Japan New Beginning in Sapporo show. But that has happened now. Um, I again didn't, I wasn't as dramatic as everyone else. Yes, there were a few mishaps e.g. in the booking, Gado. However, I think generally, like, it wasn't... Well, it was one of the best shows New Japan has ever done. I wouldn't call it doom and gloom. However, we are now moving on. And in a few days' time, we are not only going to have the um, anniversary show of New Japan, as they always do, which will see the Adri GP heavyweight champion, Tetsuya Naito, take on, like always, as tradition, the junior champion show. That is going to be interesting. However, on this day, we will also have the beginning of the New Japan Cup, which for anyone who is new to New Japan or new to this channel, it is the first major tournament of the year, whether it's heavyweight, junior, tag or singles. And basically, this cup is a chance for someone to win the opportunity to challenge Tetsuya Naito for his IWGP World Heavyweight Championship at the Sakura Genesis show on, well, I can't remember when it is, but it's in April. So I'm going to look through all the participants, matches I'm looking forward to the most, and obviously my wrong predictions. Now, let's bear in mind this year is very different because compared to last year, we don't have the presence of Kazuchika Okada. We don't have Will Ospreay. We don't have Tetsuya Naito, who is obviously the champion, so he won't be participating because like how is he gonna have a chance at his own title though i think there might i think there's sometimes been chances where you can pick your own and also there is no hiroshi tanahashi because actually he wasn't scheduled to appear anyway because he had a match against nick nemeth at sakura genesis but his injury seemingly worse than we thought so he will be off for the foreseeable future however it is not all doom and gloom guys so yeah let's have a look at the brackets and matches so yeah let's go as always, we have the very simple two block format. It is a round robin tournament. So match, you get eliminated and then we get to the final two. Now I'm going to go through the left side first of the bracket. So despite Tetsuya Naito saying, if I beat him, he will not be able to participate in the New Japan Cup. We have former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Sonata. He has a bye, obviously certain stars do, which means they don't have to do the first round. And as a former champion, it makes sense. We then have a first round Yoshihashi vs Kenta. So this is going to be quite interesting because as we know Kenta, surprisingly, is IWGP World, Champ World Tag Team Champion. And Yoshihashi is former champion with Bishamon. So this will be an interesting match. Also, if any of you have followed New Japan for a few years, you'll know that the friend, whatever the relationship is between Yoshihashi and Kenta is the funniest thing ever because, well, if you know the bow staff, he likes to take the mick out of him. I don't know if he's going to be a great match. Yoshihashi never fails to impress in the ring. You, whether you love him or you're indifferent to him, he's a great wrestler. Kenta, Kenta's been kentering recently. I really hope that he shows us something new as a champion. I don't have my hopes on it, but you know what? It's going to be a nice match for the first round. We then have Shota Umino versus Jack Perry. Now, if anyone's been watching, they'll know way back at Battle in the Valley, after the opening match that Shota was part of, Jack Perry, formerly Jungle Boy, formerly, well, I don't think, I think he's still in AEW. He basically set out a challenge to Shota. He then did that again at the um, Sapporo show, and it seems like that has led to them being the first round of the New Japan Cup. Now, this is very interesting because Shota needs a win. He has been losing, losing, losing to everybody he has faced. Osprey, um, Evil... I think he lost the match at Wrestle Kingdom as well when they were in the tag match. He needs this win. However, Jack Perry also needs this win. So it's going to be interesting. It's actually, I think Jack Perry is the one exciting entry in the sense that he's the only non-contracted, well, non-New Japan star. And it'll be interesting once see how the crowds react to him, how he works in a New Japan ring, and what the outcome is going to be. We then have Toru Yano versus Yujiro Takahashi. You need one match that's probably going to last like two minutes. And it's a fingers crossed that it's a Yano win because Yano versus either Shota Umino or Jack Perry. It's definitely going to be interesting. 
We then have um, The Empire's TJP versus Bullet Club leader David Finlay. Now, they had a match at Battle in the Valley. Now, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure that at that point, TJP was still a junior heavyweight. Uh, it's going to be interesting going into this matchup because Finlay won. He lost the title to Nick Nemeth at Sapporo. Two, he said that he, if he wins it, he wants to challenge for the Global Championship, which now Tanahashi is um, injured, could be a good thing. And three, T um, David Finley beat TJP. However, this is a completely different TJP. He has done the cage match. He is now a, well, he's a heavyweight junior, like he is a hybrid. So it's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be actually a very good match because... Finley's style is quite Japanese-based. He grew up in the dojo. TJP also has links to the dojo with the original LA dojo back eons ago. And his style is much more map-based. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Um, I Sadly, I think I see Finley winning this just because, like, Gato can't, not, can't book Finley so badly that he's just getting loss after loss. So we'll see. We then have uh, Tangaloa versus Great Okan. So again, it's going to be a really good match. Um... Both very big, strong guys. Okan has got a lot to prove. He is the king of pro wrestling champion. Yes, please remember that. Tangaloa returned from injury. Didn't have a great showing in the G1. But had his return match again. Teaming alongside Tamatonga, his brother, against G.O.D. Future. So that's Hikaleo and ELP. Should we call it G.O.D. 2.0 for now? And now Tangaloa is all by himself. He has not got Tama and the tag team to fall back on. So this will be an interesting match. And we all know Okan needs a break. We then have, um, so Hiroki Goto has a bye. You know, I would give that. I love Hiroki Goto. And this match that he, his opponent will be between Tomohiro Ishii and fellow tag team champion Takenta Chase Owens. Now, I love Ishii. I love Ishii so much. And I would, you know what, in an ideal world, I would love to see Ishii versus Goto, especially trying to decipher what is going forward, the happening going forward with Chaos. But yeah, I don't know if that's going to be uh, the case. But yeah, it should be a decent match. Ishii has been performing well. He might not be at his strongest, but he's been performing well in New Japan. In AW, he's done stuff in Rev Pro. Like, Ishii is the GOAT. And so is Hiroki Goto. So yeah. Um, for a lot of people, this side is the weaker side. And I get it because you will know why we are all saying this when you hear about the right side. Now, I did say that the... Um, Right side was stronger, but we're going to start with someone who doesn't deserve a bye and doesn't deserve to be in this cup because he's a champion and technically single champion should not be allowed in this. That is evil. That's what I'm going to say about it. We then have a very, very good first match, actually. So it's Hikaleo, I'd, not IWGP, New Japan Strong Champion, Tag Champion, fighting Bolton Oleg, our young lion now. I know there's a lot of discourse about whether Oleg should be a young lion or whether he should already be like either on excursion or on the main roster. It's been a while since a young lion has had such a big opportunity and I think it's perfect for Oleg because while he is fine, he is a great baby face, he's still not, I don't think, fully adapted to the transition to being a professional wrestler from amateur. And this is going to be the perfect chance, especially going against someone like Hikaleo, who for me personally... Maybe out of the whole of 2023 has shown the most growth. Because even if you watch my interview with him at ELP, make sure to go and do that. He has said that he used to be quite a one-dimensional wrestler in the ring. But very much focused on his height and his like power. However, since teaming with ELP, he has been much more diverse. You've seen his personality grow and he has become a more all-round wrestler. And I think this is the perfect opponent for Oleg. Two big men and we'll see how that works. We then have another great match. So this is Shingo Takagi versus Yuya Uemura. Now, Uemura has lost his hair after his match against Suji at Sapporo. Take it what you will. I personally didn't think it was too bad of a match, but I know other people thought otherwise. Shingo Takagi also lost his match. So he lost his match against Tai Chi. There wasn't really anything on the line except their YouTube channel. But yeah, it was a phenomenal match. So this is Uemura's chance to hit back at all the haters who are saying Uemura is not ready he is nowhere near close to being the future of New Japan because if anyone can bring a good match out of people it is Shingo Takagi who along with the likes of Hiroki Goto, Tomohiro Ishii and other names is someone that you can really count on to be an amazing performer and bring out the best of someone 
We then have the Battle of the Brits, the Battle of Essex, the Battle of Nottingham. I think that's where it gets. It is Callum Newman versus Gabe Kidd. Now, this, I guess, cements that Callum Newman is no longer a junior heavyweight. Well, was he ever really? Or was he just like the Empire's Young Lion? Over the past few months since he came to New Japan, he has really been showcasing the best of his talent. While he's been picking up losses, there have been losses against some of the biggest names in the company. Like, even more when he got pinned in the last two shows, he got pinned by Okada. He was in the ring with Okada. And his opponent is the madman, you know, I'm fucking mad. It is Gabriel Kidd who, after a goddamn batshit crazy cage match against the Empire, he is making his return. And I really am excited because you know what? The crowds are obsessed with him. I personally think this is going to be a Gabe Kidd win. I really hope so because then it will cement his future with the company. Because there's been a lot of rumblings at the moment that Gabe Kidd is currently wrestling without a contract. So yeah, this will be interesting to see. We then have, bloody hell, this is, I'm just reading through this. This is actually a great. We then have Yotosuji versus Jeff Cobb. Yotosuji on a high right now after beating Uemura. However, Jeff Cobb has something to prove. This man has been working his ass off, whether it was when he was under a Ring of Honor contract or now he is signed with New Japan. He has never got a singles title signed under New Japan. He had a never reign while he was with Ring of Honor. But come on, guys. Similarly to a lot of other stars, Jeff Cobb deserves this break. This is going to be a very hard-hitting match. Remember, despite both Cobb and Suji being quite big men, they're both very agile. You will see them moonsault and do lucha moves. So I'm excited for this. I also don't know who's going to win. It depends. We then have El Fantasmo and Mikey Nichols. This, again, is going to be a great match. Two very different wrestlers, actually. So ELP, remember, he is IWGP Strong Champion. Actually, I'm quite sad. I don't think that Shane Haste is in this. But you know what? We've got TMDK representation. So we have ELP, who, while he's a heavyweight now, is very firmly on a more agile, athletic base. Mikey Nichols is a very ground-based, like, quite... Not to say dirty, but, like, a strong, stylish, more... How do I say it? Like, the way he combats is very... Not erratic, but maybe more, like, street style. <laughs> Yeah, my explanation is you get the very contrasting in personalities and styles. So this is going to be interesting. Again, um, I don't know who's going to win this. Maybe Mikey Nichols might get a pin over ELP and then that will lead to a D TMDK title shot. So yeah, the last three I'm quite excited about, not in the sense of the actual match, but what could happen. So we have Tai Chi and facing Ren Narita. Uh, Ren Narita, I don't know what he's doing at the moment. He's being house of torture however the reason i'm excited for this match because if tai chi wins the person getting a bye in this is zack saber jr holy lord if we could get a match between two former dangerous techers members i will be complete because if you don't know this or if you didn't watch it when dangerous techers was a thing they were my favorite tag team of all time before tai chi went and found a marriage with sonata his husband was Zack Sabre Jr. So, while I don't know if Gato's going to pull some weird stunt, I really hope that Tai Chi wins this. Now, obviously, there are some big names missing. Apart from the ones I mentioned at the start, Eddie Kingston isn't in it, sadly. I think one person who would really have had a big impact if he was in it was Hanare, but he is still injured. Um, Shane Haste isn't in it. I'm trying to think if there's anyone else. Apart from that, I think it's got quite a lot of the New Japan guys. Um, it will be interesting to see how Gato books this or how New Japan books it in general because this will be the first major tournament since losing guys. Oh, I forgot, sorry. So, since losing guys like Osprey, um, Aussie Open, I think, as well, Okada and Tamatonga, who I also forgot to mention at the start, all guys who have always been a staple in the New Japan Cup. Now, for my predictions, I don't even know if I've got any predictions this year. Because I feel like there's like, with so much uncertainty and not really much clear vision going forward, I don't really know. I guess maybe on the left side, I have either David Finley or Shota Umino getting the win. And then on the right side, maybe Zack Sabre Jr. or Yota Suji? I don't know. It's it's a really odd one this year because I'm not going into it like knowing who's going to win. Like, for example, 
before Jay White left, I was always like, Jay's going to win, Jay's going to win. In the G1, I did quite well picking Tetsu Naito just because the storyline seemed clear. He was going to defeat Sonata. It was going to be LIJ versus former LIJ. Oh, should we just pick randomly? Okay, I think David Finley is going to win. I think especially now after Tanahashi being pulled out of uh, the Sakura Genesis show, I think that Finley is going to win and he's going to challenge Nick Nemeth. Or I think, so at first I was going to say Zack Sabre Jr. But I think it's too early for Zack to challenge because I think Naito has a match after Sakura Genesis against John Moxley, which everyone wants. Hmm, maybe either Shingo Takagi or Jeff Cobb or Suji. I'm basically just going through everyone. Like I said, I have no idea who is going to be the winner this year. But hopefully it's going to be a really good show with some great matches, some better than others. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. That was a quick look through. Normally I have more like cemented wrong predictions, but I can't do it this time. It's just too open of a field and there are too many big names. But you can tell me your predictions. You can do it at wrestling underscore chat on Twitter or as is easier, you can do it in the comments below. And while you're there, make sure to hit like, share this video with your friends and hit subscribe because you know what while some people are all doom and gloom about new japan i will always loyally be there to cover the shows uh, do previews reviews and everything in between we've got a busy few months i think this next few months are really vital for new japan and we'll see what the direction is going after losing some of the big names so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed the video enjoy the anniversary show well, let's enjoy the start of the new japan cup and i'll see you guys next time bye